Questions 21 through 25 on the 2015 Grade 7 Goss Math Contest. The numbers 1 through 25 are arranged into five rows and five columns in the table below. What is the largest possible sum that can be made using five of these numbers such that no two numbers come from the same row and no two numbers come from the same column? So we have to choose five numbers and we have to make those numbers as large as possible for the sum to be as large as possible. Okay, let's start. The very largest number is 25, so I'm definitely going to include that. So I'll put a 25 here. Now the next number, I can't include any of these guys or any of these guys because they are in the same row or same column. And that's the rule. So I can only choose from this group here. Okay, from that group, what is the largest number? Well, it's this guy. So, choose 20 for the next number. And so, I see the hang of it there. So, that's gone, that's gone. Now, with 20, again, I can't use these numbers or that number, or those numbers, because those are in the same row or column. So, the only numbers I can choose from are those ones, and choose the largest of those, which is 14. So, put a 14 here. So that means these are gone and these are gone for the same reason. They're in the same row or same column. I've only got these numbers to choose from. The largest of those is a 9. So I'll choose the 9. And therefore, this is gone and this is gone. And the only number left is a 3. So that must be the last one. And now we're going to add this up. And when you do, you get 71. So number 21, the answer is C. The width of a rectangle is doubled and the length is halved. This produces a square with perimeter P, what is the perimeter of the original rectangle. So we have some rectangle and then eventually it becomes a square. So let's label this. Initially <laughs> we have width and length and then when we go over here the width is doubled so this becomes 2W and the length is halved so this becomes L over 2. And because the shape is a square now, L over 2 is equal to 2W. So L is basically equal to 4W. Now the perimeter of the original one over here is W plus L plus W plus L, since this is L and this is W. So that's 2W plus 2L. Now L is equal to 4W, so we can put that in here. 2W plus 2 times L, which is 4W and therefore that becomes 10w. So we can call this PO for P original. And then now the perimeter here is L over 2 plus 2w plus L over 2 plus 2w. Since this is 2w over here and this guy is L over 2. So adding this we get L plus 4w. Use that fact again. So I got 4w plus 4w and that is 8w. So what they're asking for is the perimeter of the original rectangle. What is it in terms of P, which is the perimeter of the square? OK, well, we just divide 10w P0 over P is equal to 10w divided by 8w, like that. And therefore, P0 over P, the w's cancel and you are left with just 10 over 8, which is 5 over 4. And then when you cross multiply, P0 is equal to 5 over 4, P. So the perimeter of the original rectangle in terms of P is 5 over 4, P. So number 22, the answer is D. A palindrome is a positive integer that is the same when read forwards or backwards. The numbers 101 and 4554 are examples of palindromes. The ratio of the number of four-digit palindromes to the number of five-digit palindromes is. Well, let's talk about this. In a four-digit number, if we want it to become a palindrome, the first digit cannot be zero, right? Because it would no longer be a four-digit number. The first digit has to be anywhere from one to nine. So that's nine choices. The last digit has to be the same as the first digit in order for it to be a palindrome. So 
that has one choice. That one choice being the number that we chose for the first spot. Now we look at the second spot. The second spot, now we can put any number from 0 to 9, right? Because zeros would be allowed. There's 10 possible choices there. And this number will, of course, be the same as the second in order to make it a palindrome. So that's fixed. It's going to be the same number as what we chose here. So for four digits, we have 9 times 10 times 1 times 1, which is 90 palindromes. So now we have to figure out same kind of story, but for five digits. For the first digit, again, it can't be a zero. It can be anywhere from one to nine, so we've got nine choices. The last one will be the same as the first digit, so we have one possible choice there. It's fixed. Second digit, same thing, zero to nine this time, because zeros are allowed. I've got ten choices, and this has got to be the same as that one, so we have one choice. Whatever we chose here, we've got to put there for it to be a palindrome. And then the middle one, that can be any number from 0 to 9, so we got 10 choices. So this is 9 times 10 times 1 times 1, and that is 900. So the ratio of the number of 4-digit palindromes, which is 90, to the 5-digit palindromes, 900, is 1 to 10. And 1 to 10 is represented by choice E. In the diagram, rectangle PQRS is made up of six identical squares. Points U, V, W, X, Y, Z are midpoints of the sides of the square as shown. What is, which of the following triangles has the greatest area? Okay, so we have to just go through this and one by one calculate the areas. There's no other shortcut, unfortunately. Okay, no problem. Let's just keep on going here. So PVU. It's going to be the area of the full uh, square, actually, which is 2 times 2. If I let each of those be 1 in length, I've got to give it something, right? So I call them 1. And then I've got to subtract triangles. I've got to subtract this guy. I've got to subtract this guy. And I've got to subtract this triangle here. And that will give me the area of PVU. So 1 half base times height. 1 half 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 and minus 1 half 2 times 1 half and when you do this math you get 15 over 8 and I, I, I'm not going to talk you through every single one because that's not necessary I mean you guys understand PXZ okay well let's get rid of this guy we're done with that guy PXZ is where PXZ so P to X and then X to Z Okay, same sort of story here, but this time I'm going to use this um, rectangle, this one here, and use that rectangle and subtract these triangles, right, those triangles. So same story, and that's going to be 3 times 3 over 2 minus 1 half base times height minus 1 half base times height minus one-half base times height. And when you do this math, it becomes 7 over 4, which is 1.75. Okay, so we're moving right along. Next one, of course, is uh, P P V X. so P to V to X. All right, so by now I think you get the hang of it. P, V, X, as long as you don't make any algebraic mistakes. I think that's the where people would get this wrong, is small little algebraic mistakes. Um, like, you know, th 3 times uh, 2 is 6, or, or 3 times 4 is 6 instead of 12. You know what I mean? Those tiny little mistakes is what can get people. So in a careful way, let's do this one. So that's going to be 2 times 2 minus, of course, same as before, right? Those three triangles, we just have to subtract those to get P, V, X. So this is 1 half base times height, 1 half times 2, and then 1 half 3 over 2 times 1 half minus 1 half 2 times 3 over 2. And when you do this math, you get 13 over 8, and that is 1.625. All right, next one, PYS. Let's get rid of this guy. PYS, PYS. Oh, okay, this one is easier. They've taken some pity on us. So this is just 1 half base times height. And 
and that's going to be 3 over 2, which is, of course, 1.5. And then the last one, let's get rid of this one, and we got one more left, which is PXW. So where's PXW? That is PXW. Right there. Or sorry, PQW. PQW is right here, actually. So this one right here. Okay, that's an easy one. That's just one half base, which is uh, three over two times height, which is two. And that's gonna be three over two again, which is 1.5. All right, so after all this, we gotta pick the largest one. And the largest of these looks like A, this one, which is PVU, so number 24. The correct answer is A. Two different two-digit positive integers are called reversal pair if the position of the digits in the first integer is switched in the second integer. For example, 52 and 25 are a reversal pair. The integer 2015 has a property that it is equal to the product of three different prime numbers, two of which are a reversal pair, including 2015. How many positive integers less than 10,000 have this property? All right, well... The first thing is just to look at 2015 when you break it up into prime factors. It's 5 times 13 times 31. And obviously, these are the ones that make up that reversal pair, 13 and 31. So we want to have an integer less than 10,000. That can also be written as a product of three different prime numbers, so prime 1, prime 2, prime 3. And two of them have to be a reversal pair. All right, so the first thing to do is write out all the primes. And in particular, the primes that are two digits or less, right? So that's what this is. And there's 25 of them. And this is one of those questions that illustrates the importance of memorizing the prime numbers, at least, you know, the first uh, 25 or so. So in order to get a situation like this, I've got to get some P1 times a reversal pair. Now let's list our reversal pairs, 13 and 31. Looking entirely at this list right here, what two numbers are reversals of each other? Another one from that list is 17 and 71. Another one from that list would be 37 and 73. And I believe there's one more that I can get, and that's 79 and 97. So these ones would fit. And that would allow us to create this sort of a scenario. Okay, so let's work with these one at a time. So first, let's talk about P1 times 13 times 31. How many such scenarios can I get? All right, well, the number itself is n, and n has to be less than 10,000. So that means that 10,000 has to be less than n. Now, let's look at what is 13 times 31. That's 403. So this number has got to be less than this uh, uh, quotient, and this is approximately 24.8. So that means that this P1 has got to be less than 24.8. Okay, so let's list which prime numbers are less than 24. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and 23. So that's nine of them, right? But here's the thing, one of them is not allowed. Which one? This one. Why? Because it has to be three different. If I had to put a 13, it would be, two of them would be the same. So of those nine, the 13 is the only one I can't use, so I can use the other eight. So I've got eight possible ways of making this n. All right, let's move forward in the exact same way. So now we move forward to the next guy, which is P1 times 17 times 71. Again, n is equal to P1 times 17 times 71. And the number n has to be less than 10,000. So we got to divide 10,000 by the product 17 times 71 to try to figure out an approximate value for P. That is 1207. So that means that, what is that, 8.2 approximately? So that means P1 has to be less than 8.2. Well, let's list the primes that are less than uh, 8.2. 2, 3, 5, and 7. And all of these are allowed. 
There's, none of these are going to give you a, a double. So there's four of these guys. So let me just put the four there. Four here, eight here. All right. Okay, let's keep on going it's in the exact same way for the next one. The next one is 37 and 73. So this time my n is P1 times 37 times 73. Again, 10,000 divided by this product, 37 times 73, which is 2701. And that is 3.7 approximately. So P1 has got to be less than 3.7. And the only primes that could match that would be 2 and 3. So that gives me 2. And then we got one last one. And that last one is this guy right here. It's this one right here, 97 and 79. So 79 times 97. Again, 10,000 divided by this product, which is uh, 7663. And that is approximately 1.3. So that means P1 has got to be less than 1.3. Well, there's no prime number less than 1.3. So here, nothing. So we now total up the cases. 8 here, 4 here, 2 here. That total is 14. 14, therefore, is the answer to this question, number 25. That would be choice B.